Hey guys, it's Danny. Welcome to another episode from our Orchid Care for Beginners series. Today we are talking about sphagnum moss, which is, in my opinion, one of the best, if not the best, potting mix for an orchid. And I know from the get-go many of you will disagree, hence why I decided to make today's video. I find sphagnum moss to be super versatile and very, very beneficial for orchids if used correctly. And I do actually have many videos on how to properly use sphagnum moss correctly so you actually have more chances of success than failure. But because it is a very special medium, it has some special properties, I can see how there is a bit of trial and error and a lot of error actually in figuring out how to use it. So check the description to see some of my videos on how to use sphagnum moss Today, we're gonna do something different. I'm gonna try to troubleshoot why your experience with sphagnum moss might be actually pretty bad. And in doing so, hopefully figure out what you can improve or change in order to have success, because really sphagnum moss can be very, very useful in certain situations. As always, today's video and our entire Orchid Care for Beginners series is sponsored by Repotme.com, who offers you everything you can possibly need to properly grow your orchid. From potting mixes, including sphagnum moss, to pots, fertilizers, accessories, you name it. If you're into African violets, bonsais, or succulents, they have something for you as well, so I'll be sure to link you down below to their website. Feel free to check them out at any time. I will also add my favorite products from Repotme that I currently use and I have been using for a lot of years, so do check the description if you want to learn more. Alrighty then, so with that said, Let's just start with what I believe are nine, I think I found nine reasons why you might have failed with sphagnum moss. These reasons might give you an idea to use up that sphagnum moss you have lying around the house because you're just too afraid to use it. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the worst case scenario actually. First reason, maybe sphagnum moss is actually not suitable for your environment or the place you grow your orchids in. Now I will have to say that this is kind of unlikely, even in those environments which are pretty humid or where temperatures are not super, super warm. I believe that even in those territories, you can actually benefit from sphagnum moss in certain combinations or used to promote roots on cuttings or things of the sorts. However, though, it is absolutely true that in cooler, associated with more humid environments, sphagnum moss becomes more and more unnecessary. One of the traits of sphagnum moss is that it retains a lot of water. And that can be great, especially if you don't have a lot of time to water your orchids every few days. But obviously, if evaporation is not all that major in your environment, sphagnum moss actually is not all that needed. You can actually get away with bark chips since what you're looking for is a potting mix which does not retain water. So in some environments, yes, sphagnum moss, because it retains so much water which evaporates slow, it can be prone to accumulating some mold. Maybe it will stay wet for way too long, causing the air pockets to be filled for longer and in the end, suffocation of the roots. Do you consider your environment first before thinking about sphagnum moss? Because you might actually not need the benefits. And that's the whole point of sphagnum moss, to make our life easier. If that doesn't really happen, then there's no point in using sphagnum moss. And maybe the reason why it failed for you was actually your environment. A second, much more plausible reason is that maybe you used too much sphagnum moss. Now, since the main party trick of sphagnum moss is to retain water while remaining relatively airy, compared to water itself, then you can see how using only sphagnum moss might actually be a little bit too much, particularly if you have a rather big orchid. In most cases, you only need less than 50% of your potting mix to be sphagnum moss in order to have a good water retention and make your life a little easier. The ratio of sphagnum moss and bark chips in potting mixes will depend on environment, of course. The more moss you use in your potting mix or in your pot, the more water it will retain, 
the slower the full evaporation will be. And the amount of time in which your pot is way too wet might actually be too long. When it's dry, sphagnum moss actually retains a lot of air pockets, but when it's wet, those air pockets get filled with water. If the pockets of air remain full for a long period of time, you can actually have some suffocation areas in your pot, and the roots will definitely not like it. It is trial and error. Our environments are all very different, so I cannot tell you use 40% or 30%. You have to test it out. You have to start from somewhere. Maybe start with a smaller quantity at first and see how that works out. But I'm betting that most of you who have sphagnum moss issues also had a little bit too much sphagnum moss in your pot. Third potential reason why sphagnum moss failed you, maybe you used an inadequate pot. And this is one of the learning curves you need to go through when you're using sphagnum moss because it does retain more water than you can actually imagine if you've never used it. It is also important that we fit the size of the pot to the quantity of sphagnum moss we are using. As I was saying, the bigger the pot, the more water it can retain. If we're gonna use only sphagnum moss in this size of a pot, it's gonna dry out maybe next year. I'm kidding, I'm exaggerating. But you get the idea, it will stay wet a lot of time. Whereas a smaller pot will dry out faster because it physically cannot retain more water than a bigger pot. Even if we fill it up with sphagnum moss, it will just dry out faster because the quantity that needs to evaporate is smaller. So if we use only sphagnum moss for both of these pots, this one will dry faster, much faster than this one. So size is always something to consider. But then we also need to consider ventilation. So whether we're working with a plastic pot that has slits, maybe some holes that you manage to punch in for extra ventilation or an unglazed clay pot, we just need to offer a pot which manages to get some airflow in it. Even in my warm environment, which sometimes dries out way too fast for me, I would not use non-ventilated pots. I would use something that has slits or is made of unglazed clay. Now, the bigger the size, the more need for ventilation. You might actually get away with very, very small little pots, especially if your environment is warm, but just to be on the safe side, I would always try to go for pots that have ventilation or I would just put ventilation myself using a soldering iron or whatever other method. So do consider what type of pot you used with sphagnum moss and if it offered enough ventilation. Since most orchids we can grow are epiphytic, they don't grow in soils, they really like that air around the root system. Next possible reason, inadequate watering. Oh yes, when we're dealing with materials which are very water retentive, we can actually control the quantity of water they will retain. Unlike other potting mixes, which don't actively retain a lot of water in their structures, sphagnum moss does and it can distribute that moisture throughout evenly. And as far as I know, this is the only medium which truly can disperse moisture evenly throughout, so quantity actually matters. Keep in mind though, for potting mixes which only have very, very little sphagnum moss, quantity doesn't matter since you have so much more bark than sphagnum moss. But for almost half-half mixes, oh yes, quantity matters. Not to mention for full pots or baskets of sphagnum moss, then yes, it is very easy to control the overall quantity of water in your pot. Now, one way to control a little bit this quantity of water in your pot is to apply different techniques of watering. If you're only flushing the orchid at the sink or under a watering can, you will limit the quantity of water in that pot since sphagnum moss takes a little bit of time when it's dry to re-wet. Initially, it repels water a little bit, but after a few seconds, it starts to absorb it. So a quick flush under the sink in a potting mix with a lot of sphagnum moss can determine a lower quantity of water in that pot which will evaporate faster. Now imagine if we soak this pot for 15 minutes. Oh yeah, that moss will become fully saturated with water and it will dry out much slower than if only you poured water really fast through the pot. In some cases, soaking the sphagnum moss is absolutely unnecessary and quite detrimental. In some cases, it's absolutely fine. Again, depends on your environment. But most of the times when you have a potting mix with a lot of sphagnum moss, you really don't need to soak it up. A quick flush is all you need. I actually use a watering can with mine. If you've seen my repottings, 
you see that I actually use sphagnum moss in a very cheeky way. I add a bottom layer of sphagnum moss and then moss throughout the pot, pretty much zigzagging. Why do I do this? Well, it's because I leave just a little bit of water at the bottom, which the sphagnum moss absorbs and drags up through the pot, through the entire pot. The bark, it doesn't soak up anything. The bark is there for aeration, but the moss is the true star of my mixes because it drags the water. So this is something you can actually achieve when you're a little bit more experienced. If you're a beginner right now, if you have a potting mix that looks like this, just run a little bit of water at the sink or wherever through the pot, maybe for four seconds or so, and that should be enough. Start with that and see how it goes. If you've, however, soaked your pots and they just did not dry out within two weeks or so, then definitely the watering technique is not suited for your particular case. Next reason, and this is a big one, compressing. What do I mean by that? When it's dry, sphagnum moss is kind of like a pretty hard sponge. You press on it, but then it goes back to its original shape. By the way, this is compressed sphagnum moss. I cannot compress it more, but this is loose sphagnum moss. So when dry, everything is okay. However, when wet, things are definitely not as flexible. When sphagnum moss is wet, you can press on it so, so much that you can fill a tiny, tiny little pot with an impressive quantity of sphagnum moss. And one of the main mistakes people do when using sphagnum moss is to compress it when potting orchids in it. What compressing sphagnum moss does is reduce the quantity of air pockets it retains. These air pockets are essential for orchids, the vast majority of orchids. So whenever you repot any orchid into a potting mix containing a lot of sphagnum moss or just sphagnum moss itself, be sure to keep it airy and fluffy. Don't be scared of the air pockets. Let's see if I can show you with this orchid. If you really look through the pot, you can see the sphagnum moss layers and you can see that they have a lot of gaps. It's not a uniform and dense, let's say, potting mix. This is what you want to have. You don't want the sphagnum moss to always be in contact with all of the roots all the time. Even though this is a slipper orchid, which is a terrestrial orchid, it just does not grow in very heavy clay soils. It grows in the top layer of the forest where things are very airy. You have a lot of branches and leaves and all of that. I think it's called hummus. Did I just say the name of the dish? Anyway, even terrestrial orchids hate compacted potting mixes and a compacted sphagnum moss is a killer. Trust me on that one. Do not compact it. Keep it fluffy, keep it loose, keep it just like this. If you have a sphagnum moss mixture that looks like this in your pot, keep it like this. Don't press it down. The idea is to retain moisture in the air pockets and water in its structures, not to offer a blob, <laughs> in lack of a better word, of just wetness. You have water that can do that, but that's not appropriate for orchids. You want to have the air pockets. So be sure to never, ever, ever, ever compact and compress sphagnum moss when you pot orchids in it. Next up, another very real reason, bad quality sphagnum moss. It's out there, the cheaper, the worst, in my opinion, sadly. The best quality sphagnum moss that I have used is New Zealand sphagnum moss. The brand that I currently use and I'm not sponsored by is Spagmoss. You can find this brand on Repot Me as well, which is the sponsor of this video, but you can also find just New Zealand sphagnum moss coming from various brands, which is just as good. The worst type of sphagnum moss that I used was a sort of compressed chili moss that didn't actually have a brand attached to it, or it was a brand that I've never heard before. And yes, it was good for about a month or so, but then it started to degrade really, really bad. Because that's the thing with sphagnum moss. Because it stays wet, it actually can degrade faster than bark. But good quality sphagnum moss doesn't. It actually outlasted some types of barks that I used. Now, fast degradation is only one thing that can affect your orchid fast, but also some sphagnum mosses 
are infested with all sorts of fungi and all sorts of other plants and organisms you really don't want to have in your pots. Some of them do affect orchids. So do a little bit of research before deciding what type of sphagnum moss you should buy. Or if you have something in your territory, do a Google search, see what people think of it, see what reviews you have for that particular brand. But definitely keep in mind that you might have used a bad quality sphagnum moss that started to create all sorts of molds and other issues in your pot. I think we're at number seven. Seventh reason, and this is one that most of you probably will not experience, algae prone environments. Oh boy, oh boy, that's a big one for me. So since sphagnum moss retains water and stays wet, it's also a pretty good environment for algae. For most of you, I'm pretty sure algae are not an issue if you have a little bit of greenery, quote unquote, on top of your potting mixes or in your pots, it's absolutely fine. But if you have excessive algae, which I'm gonna show you some footage right now, that can be really, really problematic. Sometimes it can even lead to cyanobacteria, which produces a toxic compound that I believe can definitely affect orchid roots. It's not a good idea to have cyanobacteria in your home. So it did happen to me in the past that excessive algae accumulations burnt, literally burnt root tips and orchid stems. Nowadays, I always top my mixes with a layer of bark, but inside, if you dig, you will find sphagnum moss. And this is a setup which only has sphagnum moss since it's a Neophenicia setup. Traditionally, these orchids are mounted on sphagnum moss and they look beautiful. In my environment, that mount will be overrun by algae in a couple of months. So what I do is shade the sphagnum moss. This is why, or pretty much the main reason why I always use decorative pots with my orchids. I want to shade the medium inside so that I protect the pot and the roots from algae. If you have the very bad luck of having an environment prone to algae accumulations such as myself and you used sphagnum moss as a top layer and it became stinky and green in no time, then I can totally understand you hate sphagnum moss, but it's not really the moss's problem. As long as you manage to shade as much as possible the moss, you should have no issue with algae, your orchids should actually be fine. Eighth reason, and again, I think this is a big one, I think most of you will go through this one at some point, root shock. Whenever you're gonna repot an orchid into a brand new potting mix, the roots will take a little bit of time to adapt. The problem is when the two mixes are just so, so different that the roots don't adapt, they just die off. And this is especially prone to happening with sphagnum moss. If you go from a medium of just bark chips, a very airy, very fast drying medium, you go from that to something that has a lot of sphagnum moss and stays quite wet for a lot of time, then your orchid will not like it, and mainly the roots because they just are not adapted to withstand that amount of moisture. So what they do is go into what we call a repot shock or a transplant shock, in which all of the old roots will just die off, your orchid will become dehydrated, you're gonna be really, really scared, I know I was, but the new roots that will form will adapt to whatever mix you're using. It's not a good idea to go from an extreme to another. So if you have an orchid potted only in bark chips, don't pot it immediately into a very heavy sphagnum moss mixture. If you want to introduce sphagnum moss, introduce it gradually. 10, 20, 30% sphagnum moss, depending on your environment. Next repot, which can be next year, if you'd like, you can introduce a little bit more sphagnum moss. Also try to water your orchid in such a manner that the pot doesn't actually retain a whole lot of water from the get-go. And sometimes you can actually get away with the transition seamlessly. But it is very, very true that sphagnum moss can create shock. If orchids come from super airy potting mixes that just don't suit you and you just want to put them in something that retains a lot more water. So be careful with that. It happens a lot. You can actually lose all the root system on your orchid and sometimes those orchids will not recover all that fast and you're just gonna have a sit back orchid for years. And ninth and final reason, just reasons that have nothing to do with sphagnum moss and it's just a coincidence. It happens so, so often and I see it in the comment section a lot. 
you have an orchid which might have already been sick but it didn't show signs yet it coincides with you repotting it into a moss mixture and lo and behold the orchid is starting to decline and you have no other possible explanation than the sphagnum moss even though you did everything right well sometimes it's really not the sphagnum moss it's the orchid it can be as easy as using inadequate temperature of the water does ice ring any bell yeah stop using ice right now maybe your orchid had some pests maybe your orchid actually had pretty unhealthy roots to begin with but you just didn't really notice it particularly if you're at the beginning so all of these can be very valid reasons that just coincide with repotting into a sphagnum moss potting mix be careful of all of these things that we mentioned today and see if it works out maybe this time it actually will so that is about it for today. These are the nine possible reasons that I can come up with. If you have more reasons, do feel free to put them in a comment down below. Bottom line, I feel like sphagnum moss can be of great use and great help for those of you who have issues with too much warmth, very low humidity, orchids which are just so, so thirsty that you cannot keep up with their watering schedule and so on. So I hope you won't be put off by the very dramatic comments you might read on forums or internet in general and you just give it a go yourself. Again, I will be sure to link you some more videos that I made on sphagnum moss below just so you're prepared with everything. And with that said, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed today's subject. I hope it will help you out. Thank you RipodMe for sponsoring yet another episode from our Orchid Care for Beginners series. Subscribe to my channel for more orchid videos, tutorials, experiments, updates and other fun orchid subjects. If you wish to support the channel, do consider becoming a member or visit the merch store linked down below in the description. You can also follow me on Instagram and Facebook, it's always nice to stay in touch there as well. And with that said, I'll see you next time. Bye!